We heavily rely on technologies to stay connected to the world around us. From smartphones and tablets to laptops and Wi-Fi networks, our exposure to various forms of electromagnetic radiation is higher than ever. This exposure is known as tech radiation, and it raises many concerns about its potential effects on human health. In this video, we'll explore the nature of tech radiation, its potential health risks, especially for children, and know how we can reduce its negative effects. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get regular updates. Let's get started. What is tech radiation? Tech radiation, often referred to as electromagnetic radiation or EMR, is emitted by electronic devices. The primary sources of tech radiation can be divided into two categories, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. However, tech radiation predominantly involves non-ionizing radiation, which lacks the energy to ionize atoms but can still affect biological tissues. Non-ionizing radiation includes radio frequency, RF radiation from cell phones, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth devices, as well as extremely low frequency radiation from power lines and electrical appliances. Although non-ionizing, these forms of radiation can still penetrate the body and interact with tissues, raising concerns about their long-term health effects. Health Effects on Adults Electromagnetic hypersensitivity, or EHS, is a condition where individuals experience various symptoms from non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation from devices such as Wi-Fi and mobile phone signals. An international report by 32 experts argues that there is enough evidence to acknowledge EHS as a distinct neuropathological disorder. However, some scientists only recognize the adverse thermal effects of this radiation, like a rise in body temperature, and confuse EHS with a psychological fear of electromagnetic devices. Environmental intolerances have triggers and pathways that affect different parts of the body in various ways for different people. Scientific proof of health causalities requires a known mechanism, like the genetic defect that affects DNA repair in skin tissue and causes skin cancer after sun exposure. Some scientists believe there is a known mechanism for EHS. For example, one study discovered people with EHGS are 10 times more likely to be genetically predisposed to oxidative stress. This genetic variant can raise the risk of developing additional disorders, including multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, leukemia, and other EHGS-related diseases. Several studies have indicated a possible association between heavy cell phone use and an increased risk of gliomas, a type of brain tumor. While the evidence is not yet conclusive, it has prompted health agencies to classify RF radiation as a possible carcinogen. Special considerations for children. Children are often considered more vulnerable to tech radiation due to several factors. Firstly, children have smaller heads, allowing cell phone and wireless radiation to penetrate deeper into their brains since the distance from their skull to the brain center is shorter. This is concerning because government regulations are based on a 220-pound man's head, not a child's. Furthermore, children's skulls are thinner than those of adults, resulting in less protection. According to research, kids can absorb up to 10 times more radiation in the bone marrow of their skulls than adults. Another factor is a child's rapidly developing brain. During childhood, the brain grows and learns at a significantly higher rate than in adults. However, scientists have found that even small amounts of microwave radiation can damage and kill brain cells in animal studies. Disruption of brain development at an early age can cause significant neurological changes later in life. Furthermore, children's bodies include more active stem cells, which are more sensitive to low doses of microwave radiation than other cells. Stem cells differentiate into specialized cell types, which are essential for development. This increases their susceptibility to the effects of wireless radiation. According to some research, long-term exposure to technology radiation in kids may be associated with behavioral issues, attention deficiencies, and learning difficulties. Furthermore, there is concern that excessive screen usage and electromagnetic radiation exposure may contribute to developmental delays as well as mental health problems including depression and anxiety. Reducing exposure to tech radiation, especially for children, is important to protect their health and development. Although research specifically focusing on children is limited, the general recommendations for reducing exposure are based on the principles of minimizing potential risks. Measures for reducing exposure 
Individuals concerned about tech radiation can take several personal precautions to minimize exposure. To start reducing tech radiation exposure in your home, take stock of all the electronic devices you have. This includes smart speakers, cordless phones, mouses, gaming consoles, cell phones, wireless security systems, and electric alarm clocks. Even wearable fitness equipment, such as Fitbits, which you may not realize generate radiation, contribute to wireless radiation exposure. It's a good idea to limit their use for younger kids. For kids, one easy way to reduce radiation exposure is by increasing the distance between your child and these devices. The more room available, the less radiation they will be exposed to. For example, utilizing corded headphones or a cell phone speaker mode can assist keep the device away from your child's body. It is also preferable to have youngsters carry their devices in a backpack or bag rather than in their pockets. When a device isn't in use, set to airplane mode. This prevents the device from constantly looking for signals and releasing unwanted radiation. Also, keep Wi-Fi routers and cordless phone base stations away from where children sleep, study, and play. If your Wi-Fi router is set to high, it may release more radiation than is necessary. Another efficient technique to reduce radiation exposure is to use connected devices wherever possible. Begin by switching wireless headphones with wired ones. Look for other gadgets such as keyboards, mice, and microphones that are wired or utilize batteries rather than wireless. Wireless earphones, in particular, transmit radio frequency radiation, thus it is preferable to minimize their use. Ongoing studies. Despite these concerns, it is important to note that the research on the health effects of wireless communication is still in its early stages and more studies are needed to fully understand the potential risks. Additionally, many of the studies that have been conducted have produced conflicting results, making it difficult to draw definitive conclusions about the impact of wireless communication on human health. A significant area of investigation includes understanding the biological mechanisms through which RF radiation may affect human health. Advancements in technology and increased use of electronic devices necessitate continued investigation to better understand potential risks and establish evidence-based guidelines. Public awareness campaigns can also play a vital role in educating people about the potential risks of tech radiation and promoting safer practices. Regulatory guidelines and standards. In response to concerns about tech radiation, Many organizations have developed guidelines and safety standards for using wireless communication technologies. The Federal Communications Commission FCC, has set restrictions on the level of radiation that electronic gadgets can produce, and manufacturers must test their products to verify they satisfy these criteria. Furthermore, many nations have created standards for utilizing wireless communication devices in schools and other public places to reduce potential health risks. The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection ICNIRP, is an independent organization that develops guidelines for reducing exposure to non-ionizing radiation. The ICNIRP guidelines are widely recognized and used by many countries to set national exposure limits for RF radiation. These guidelines are based on the principle of limiting exposure to levels that are known to cause adverse health effects. For example, the guidelines set limits on the specific absorption rate SAR, which measures the rate at which the body absorbs RF energy. The SAR limit for mobile phones is set at 2 watts per kilogram, averaged over 10 grams of tissue. In addition to regulatory guidelines, there are industry standards that manufacturers must adhere to in order to ensure the safety of their products. By following these guidelines and standards, we can help reduce the potential health risks associated with tech radiation and create a safer environment for everyone, especially children who are more vulnerable to these risks. That's all for now. Hope you found the video educational and helpful. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more exciting content. Thanks for watching.